All right, welcome to the second part of the landscape photography critique. And if you have not seen the first episode, you can see it right here or just check out the channel. And yeah, so again, I, I got over 100 entries for this landscape photography critique and we've narrowed it down to the top 12. And we already did pick one winner from the batch from the other episode and on this episode we're gonna get another six with another winner for this batch um perhaps um let me give a bit of a backgrounder as to what i i do or how i approach these critiques before the pandemic hit i actually started doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions um this was kicked off with a big workshop of around 30 people and then I did after one-on-one um, -on -one mentoring sessions. And this was basically um, a comprehensive mentoring session on landscape photography, travel photography, cityscapes, and even a bit of architecture. And perhaps the, the common denominator between all of them is composition, visual design in general. Um, and that's actually why I called it the Creative Vision Clinic. If you're interested in having one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions about um, landscape, architecture, photography, um, outdoor photography in general, cityscapes, and post-processing, then do feel free to send me an email or maybe send me a DM on Instagram to find out more about this one-on-one -on -one mentoring session. So yeah, before I get on to the images, let me tell you what the winners of this critique will be getting. So the two winners will get one each of this Lopro SNF utility pouch 100. So this is a nice utility pouch that you can attach to the waist, um, waist belt of your camera backpack especially if you're using a low pro um, this has a velcro attachment right here so you can hook it up to the belt of your backpack or to a utility belt that you might be using especially for for people who shoot weddings and events and this one also has um, a hook here a loop here and another loop here so you can um, attach maybe other pouches or accessories onto them and a pocket right here and of course the main compartment right here so this one can be used for um, extra accessories maybe spare batteries remotes um, even filters and actually even spare lenses so if you need extra space in your backpack um, for extra lenses then you can put them inside this compartment right here so there this is what the winners are going to get thank you to low pro philippines for sponsoring the price for this one all right on to our first image this image comes from rob vargas really when i first saw this the first question in my head was where was this taken from because of course i know this is of the um the windmills in Pililla Rizal. I want to know the exact location because this is a really good vantage point. Um, yeah, this this really got my attention when I first saw it. Um, there's very little I would change in this. So definitely I would clone this one out, this one and this area right here just to get rid of all that um, very minimal clutter actually um, the next question in my head and again I'm not sure which one to do and of course these are my suggestions you can either crop this area right here and just leave the edge as that eliminated fog and kind of gives you a more minimalist design or if not, you can just clone out this area and just, you know, take out that that vertical 
virtual vertical line and kind of give it a bit more continuity. So uh, let me increase this, the size of my brush and just show you what would happen if you clone that out really quick. And there we go. Um, yeah, again, solid image. I really love this image. I love the mood of this image and how well this was executed. So yeah, those are just my suggestions. Um, really amazing job, Rob. Next image comes from Anthony Moncal. Um, I believe this guy is based in Bataan. And really, I'm a fan of his astrophotography composite work. Um, he does a lot of moonshots uh, that, that he uses for um, astro composites. And his, his output is just outstanding. I was expecting him to send over something like that but perhaps um he he wanted to do something more landscape which i really appreciate um solid image solid composition um just a few things just a few suggestions to improve so let me bring back my grid to check again if you're gonna make use of symmetry and if you're gonna put a, a central image uh, a central element at the center make it make it make sure it's spot on it at the center and he really did it well right here so i'm pretty sure he he made an effort to really straighten that horizon out and also make sure that hut or or that uh, roof is right at the very center of the frame so that's a huge plus for me um next is I just see a bit of clutter again on on this side so you know just nitpicking on on things that we can improve on and just really make that that surface of the water as smooth as possible and perhaps the most I would like to see on this image is a longer exposure and I'm saying that because I we have two leading lines we have two diagonal lines of course right here the railing of the the pier and they are already pointing to that hut what i would see more from this image are longer streaks of clouds that would also point towards that central element so uh, i want to see this cloud maybe move a bit more you know it doesn't really have to take the entire space but really we just want to see a longer trail and same goes here generally we want them to to point a little bit further because if it it were a finger it it, it is pointing towards the center but not fully extended so we want the trails to be kind of really moving towards that center but again solid image altogether um thank you anthony for joining this critique this next image comes from christian kyle tubice or tubice this really drew me when i first saw it it really has that mood but also it kind of puzzled me a bit as to um what christian was thinking when he was composing this shot because of course we have the central element which is the waterfalls and the waterfalls are are quite um smooth at this point i would use a cpl i don't know if you did but um generally we use cpl filters on these to lessen the the shine of the water especially um, when we're doing pretty lengthy exposures. Now, um, I'm a bit torn with the visual design of this and generally the visual path because I kind of see two almost um, unrelated layers. And of course, I'm talking about this layer right here and everything else. So perhaps it, does have a bit of direction in a sense because we have that spiral, spiral right there. But nothing really leads to the waterfalls. So 
I I don't know if you can maybe step a bit further and shoot from here to get that uh, waterfalls up close. Um, also, I know you really wanted to get that as a foreground and maybe a bit of focus stacking would have helped on that one. But yeah, I'm a bit torn with this image because I don't, my eyes don't quite know where you want them to go. Definitely, this was done with the right intentions. It's just that really, I don't know where your lines or your visual path is leading. Of course, it we know you want it to lead to the waterfalls, but... Um, perhaps there is a better composition to have and to use in this particular image. This next image from Jovelin Matteo is just striking. Pun intended. Um, if if you watch my, my videos, you would know that I have that fascination with lightning. And I do think that any nighttime image is enhanced exponentially by capturing a lightning strike so it is kind of a bit tricky to to capture lightning and Jovelin really did a good job on this one and perhaps the only thing I would do is to clone out this bright spot there because it's a bit distracting and that's it however um this wouldn't be my winner for this batch simply because if I were to pick a winner as a lightning uh, a, a lightning shot as a winner, it would have to have something something in the foreground. And of course, in this situation, I don't think there's anything um, she could have shot as a foreground because the lightning strikes were a bit um, distant. But yeah, this is. Again, a really good shot to begin with. It's ca caught my attention when she sent her photos. And really good, amazing job, Jovelin. This next image comes from, I think, the only um, international uh, entry that we have. And this comes from from Paulo Jack Matos um, from Brazil. And... Really, I love this image because there's such a mood right uh, going on right here. And let me just check the the symmetry on this one. So yeah, um, as as I've said like a few times already, maybe just center in onto your sunset because you put the sun in the middle. So make sure it's right smack on the very middle. Um, Last thing I would change maybe is to decrease the the proportion of the negative space on top. So maybe crop it out just like that. And maybe even cut it 16 by 9 to get something like this. There's not much, much detail left in the sky. And we just don't want to make it overpower everything because we do have a very nice cityscape there's kind of that um, formation um, created by the the rooftops of these buildings and you don't want that to be outshined by the empty sky and that's why I, I, I would crop this image to lessen the proportion of the empty sky and just you know be able to to emphasize the fact that there is that pattern right there. But yeah, amazing shot, Jack. Um, thank you for joining this. Uh, as I said, the last image is the winner of this um, part of the critique. And this one comes from Miguel Herse. And I don't know where this image was taken. And I, I do kind of wish I asked you guys to send over high-resolution images. Um, but image quality is not part of this critique. It's just basically visual design and composition. And this is just spot on. Um, out of the hundred images that I saw, this is one of the very few wherein I wouldn't change so much or maybe not change a thing altogether if i were to change anything i would just clone out the bright spots right here 
And again, I am not imposing that that makes it better just in my personal taste. Um, I would like to flatten out that particular segment. Um, but yeah, it, it all depends on what you, the extent of what you would do in post processing or if you want to maintain um, the utmost authenticity of the image. But um, if we're talking about visual design altogether, that is the one thing I would do. And I wouldn't touch it any further. This is a really good image. Perhaps an image that you might see on one of the, the Apple or Windows wallpapers in the future. So yeah, congratulations Miguel for um, winning this episode of the Landscape Photography Critique. And thank you for everyone who joined in and watched. If you have any questions, of course, you can always reach out to me through the comment section or via DM on Instagram. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And again, if you want to have your own one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with me, we can do that online. Send me a message on Instagram and we'll make it happen. And I just realized that I did not switch cameras. So again, thank you for watching this episode. And... Don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments down below and thank you for watching.